Hello my friends. Welcome to another painting with Harold. I am Harold. And tonight we're going to finish up this little how-to series we've been doing. If you had not been following it on uh, my YouTube channel, the first three videos are posted there at Painting with Harold. And for y'all that have been following me, I was left last night with a decision on if I was going to do anything to these trees. I still haven't made a full decision. I'm not going to fix this one though. I kind of, it kind of grew on me. By the time this video is over, I may or may not add a little highlight back there. If I do, it'll be very, very minimal. And tonight my colors are titanium white, lizard crimson, Van Dyke brown, sap green, cad yellow, yellow ochre, Indian yellow, and bright red. And I have out very little of each of these, except for yellow ochre. I mean, that was my fault. I put out a little too much. But I think what we're going to do is, first, I think I'm going to do our path before I do anything else. That way it's a... Uh, It's there, and we can use it as a reference to uh, kind of lay out our bushes. And I think that'll make a little more sense once we get going. So we'll try just to see where we hit. All right, to do my path, I'm just going to grab a little, a little small uh, fan brush and... The colors I'm going to use are going to be yellow ochre, a little of the Van Dyke brown, and maybe just a little of the white, maybe. I want to see what this looks like when I get it mixed up here. Alright, I got a little yellow ochre, and I am mixing these colors right on my brush. I think that's going to be a little too dark. So yeah, I am. I'm going to add just a little bit of white. Not much, but just a little. And you can kind of leave them marbled if you want to. They don't have to be mixed thoroughly. All right, I'm going to come right up here. Now we want our pad to disappear back here in the back. So we want just a little, just a little color showing back there, not much. Uh, it won't take a whole lot to uh, to sell this part of the illusion. It'll be it'll be kind of disappearing back between these trees here. So now. When we go to pulling this across, we want to do this kind of, kind of lightly because we don't want to, we don't want to kill all the dark in our path. We just want this little bit of highlight color to show up, kind of like in the middle, because we're gonna come out with these these bushes and we're gonna come out with that stuff just a little bit over the. Uh, over the path to make it look like it's kind of sitting down in the uh, like the bushes are sitting the path down into the paint. Right, just real, real lightly. That's all I'm trying to do across here. Just a little bit. Like I said, I don't, I don't think it's going to take a lot of highlight color in here. Just to make it look like a little, little dirt path. About like that. that's about all we need, really. Yep. Okay. All right. I'll go ahead and drop that brush in the, in the thinner. And then next, I am going to, I'm gonna grab a 
little filbert brush and I will come back up there oh, I got one. all right then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna mix up just a little bit of sap green and just a little bit of cad yellow and I don't want this color I don't want this color to get real bright I want it to I want it to be a light green or a lighter green but I don't I still want it to look more to the green than to the yellow because on these uh on these evergreens back here I just don't want them I just don't want them glowing and what we may do uh, after we see what it looks like with the with the green by itself you know or darker green we may come back and add a little bit of more highlight to the outside edges to the light side but for now I just wanna I just wanna keep them kinda more to the green side because in my mind I'm, I'm really wanting this painting to be maybe more of the late summer kinda feel I don't really want it to be a I don't want it to be a fall painting. I don't want a lot of fall colors in it. And it's it's real easy to uh to, to make fall colors with with the colors that we got to use for our highlights. It's real easy. Because the yellow ochre and, and all the other colors, they they will they will make a fall color quick. But if we can stay away from that, we're gonna we may end up having to just use a lot more green in this painting than than normal. But I just I think this painting should have more of a a summer feel to it than a gonna fall but now with that said we do have quite a bit of uh, snow on these mountains too so fall colors might not be might not be real bad they give it a lot of a lot of little colors that that would look good I don't know we'll see as we go along That's the thing, that's the joy of painting, is uh, I guess never really knowing what you're going to do every time you sit down at the canvas. And I know sometimes it's not good to make decisions on the fly either because you, uh, you should have some kind of idea about what you're going to do. I posted a video on my channel tonight, guys, that <laughs> if y'all hadn't watched it, it's just a little short video. I think it's like 10 seconds long. It's, uh, it's my grandson. He's three. And he is so funny. I mean, he, he is just, he's naturally funny. He don't even try to be funny, and he's funny. He was, he plays wee ball. And, uh, to be so small, I mean, he is, he really, and I'm not saying it because he's my grandson, he's really not a bad ball player to be three years old. Well, my granddaughter, she plays softball, and uh, he's he's been watching her play since he was old enough to, I guess, understand what they, what they do out there. And, uh... <laughs> 
He watches baseball with his dad on TV. And he, he knows that when a runner's going home or to a base that, you know, a lot of times they just slide. <laughs> well, he, he was coming to the home bait, home plate, and he, uh, he slid. And bless his heart, he, he got up. He, he slid short of, of home plate. He never even touched it. And uh, he, he got up and uh, <laughs> he, he slid again. So he slid twice and he never even touched the base either time. And he jumps up like a champion, you know, just jumps right up and, and, and just walks off, you know, like he'd done something. And that video, I mean, it is just, it's hilarious. The way he, the way he just comes in there and slides. And he gets up and he slides again. All right. Now, I'm going to say we got those highlighted. I'm going to come into a little bit more of the green. And I'm going to add a little bit more yellow this time. And I'm going to tap a one inch brush into this color. Just the corner of a one-inch brush. As you can see, that's all I got loaded up. It's just a corner. And, uh, I'm going to come back there and I'm going to start, I've got to make some kind of decision. On, we'll just see where we got. Well, first we got to do this. All right, I'm going to come up here just a little bit up on that trunk right there. And I'm just going to start lightly touching around. And get just a tad bit of thinner out here. I'm going to start touching that color around back here. Just in a little, just in a little round shape like a bush. And come towards the the path to make it look like it's going in between them. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna go ahead and use these other colors, these yellow ochres and stuff, because we're gonna need to make color changes back there. And if I don't do that, we're gonna end up with just a ton of <coughs> different colors of green. And we can still have some some of these colors. Even as a fall color, we can still have them. And still have some green in here too that just kind of just hadn't died off yet. I guess the most important thing here that I should mention is when you're making these bushes, kind of keep all your all your branches and stuff going, you know, keep everything kind of straight up. Don't come in here and lay them down to the side until you start getting to that that kind of clockwise, counterclockwise shape over here. Like, let me show you what I'm saying. Like right here, when you come up here on this side, just keep these kind of straight and then turn it like that. And just come in here and just make you a, a few random little bush shapes and little, you know, just little indications of uh, bushes. You just don't want them all to, to take off on you and be in all different kind of directions. Because if they do that, then it's just not going to. It's just not going to look right. And I went right there with just straight yellow, by the way. Then we'll come back over here into the yellow ochre and a little bit more to green. And we'll come in here and make us another one. 
I guess what I'm trying to say is you don't want your bushes to look like they're laying over. Because that's easily done. another one like if you put that green on the outside here you can always sneak under that green with uh, with a little bit more yellow I mean it, it don't have to be just one bush right there it could be two growing right here just different colors see how that works Then if you want to come over here and pick you up a little of the white and bring it into the Indian yellow, you can do that just you know a little bit. You can put you a just a different color one here, and this is just a light touch. Just you know, just trying to be careful not to not to kill all the dark. Because if you kill all that dark, you're not going to have no depth in that. It's just going to all be flat. And it's just going to look like a bunch of colors pushed together in here. And that dark color right now is, is uh, it's going to act as your separator back in here. <coughs> then we can come in with a little bit of our a bright red. And we can really give ourselves a nice little firecracker right here if we want to. Just come in here and, and then start turning turning that brush as you start going down. I believe you can tell that a little better on the on the bigger bushes here. How I did that. See, when you get out here is when you can turn and kind of make your make your uh, branches look like they're coming out toward the path. Then we can come up here and get us a little of the alizarin. Bring it over here and put it in the yellow ochre. Just mix you, you know, basically when, you, when you're doing yours, just mix whatever colors you want, you know. I mean, it's, it's your painting, so you don't have to, I don't, I don't think you have to follow some kind of rule here. I mean, you just you basically make it whatever, whatever color you want it to be. Like right here, I'm adding, I'm adding several colors in this one. And just, you know, just make it look like there's a couple bushes there. Then you can come back along here and just here and there and touch in little places and just, you know, give it a little kiss of color here and there. And it, it just, it's just a variety. It's just something different is all it is, basically. And that way everything don't look, look all solid and, and, out of place more natural that's that's a good word for it it'll, it'll just look more natural because you know in nature if you if you walk in somewhere or you you somewhere and you see a bunch of a bunch of colors very seldom are you gonna see A whole bunch of colors just piled up in one place. Even even when you're looking at trees, you can uh, see like that white. You know, it just it just looks like a little a little pop of color in there with you know something that had some little white, maybe little white flowers on it. But I was sitting outside the other day, and uh, I was looking at, at how the trees in our front yard, how they all, I mean, they're just all so different. There's some out there that have green, and 
Some of it's a yellowish green. Some of it's a dark, dark green. And then over here, we're going to basically do the same thing that we did on that side. We're just going to work our colors around. But see how I got my bushes? They're straight up. They're not... They're not leaning over into the pad. I hope I'm making sense when I when I say that. All right, then we'll we'll come out of this a little bit with a, a little bit brighter color. We'll get us some of that white and Indian yellow. And we'll come back in here and we'll kind of we'll kind of get away from some of that. Real dark color. And just don't cover up your whole path. You know, that's, that's one thing you want to be careful not to do. And we'll come back into our green again. Because we're trying to, we're trying to get away from it a little bit here. And I don't want to get away from all of it. I want to keep... I want as much green in here as I can. But I don't want to oversaturate the... The paint with green, but I do I do want that occasional pop of green here and there, because I just I think it's gonna add. I think it'll add a whole new uh, theme or a whole new look. With all those different greens in it. Cause I know I've had a tendency here lately to, to to fall off into this fall theme, and which is my favorite time of year. So I mean, that's y'all just have to forgive me for it. But fall is, I mean, it, it's it's that's my time of year. All the uh, all the colors start popping out, and, and leaves start dying. And, Everything's taking a break for the for the next year. Getting ready for new growth. Then the spring comes along and there it is. Everything's just all brand new. Ready to start all over again. I'll get a little red now. With a little of this, a little bit of this ochre, and we'll come in here and give us a little, a little orangey effect. Just run in there, and I'll grab a little more yellow. And we'll come in here and give him a little more, a little flavor. I'll come back over in my white. And I'll come up here in the crimson and maybe turn this a little, a little pinkish, but not. But pink won't be the the dominant color. It'll just be that, just that one little one there sticking out. And then I'll go back to my green again. Since it's got that little bit of crimson in it, it may want to go over to the brown side just a little. So I'll pick up a little bit of yellow and bring up here with it. And then we'll come in here. There it is. That looks good. And just like that, our little path just looks like it's going on back disappearing back there between those pines or those evergreens I can't really call them pines because here in Mississippi where I live oh and by the way speaking of Mississippi uh, if y'all ever you know if you if you got a chance and you and you see this video comment on it what state you're from so I have some kind of idea about you know who's seeing what and where y'all from when y'all 
when y'all seeing it. Because uh, I said in that one video the other day I've been talking to a guy. And he's from Tennessee, which is not real far from us. But depending on what part he's in, you know, that could that could really determine how far he actually is away. Which I could look it up on Google, I guess, if I wanted to. Or if I had if I thought about it, I guess that's what I should say. But you know, I mean you ain't gotta you ain't gotta tell me no city. You know, just, uh, you know, like if you're from California, say California, and so forth, you know. All right, I kind of like the way that looks. Uh, that turned out pretty well. And then, I think what I'm going to do, all right, I see something here. I'm going to, I'm going to clean my, my favorite brush right quick and I'm gonna put a little thinner on it and I'll come up here into my my Van Dyke Brown and I'll pull it through on one side and then on the other side I'm gonna come through that white and that way I got I got white on one side and Van Dyke Brown on the other side. And I'm gonna come right up here with the white up. I want the white toward the top. I'm gonna come up here and I wanna get this to where y'all can see it. I just wanna I wanna come straight in and just barely touch. Just barely touch in here. And put just put a little bit of a little rock here and there. They don't. They don't have to be everywhere. Just, just little stones, you know, along the pathway. And I'm not gonna do any on this side because I really don't. I really don't think you would see them over here, over the bushes. I don't think you would. You know, I could be wrong, but I just, I really don't. I don't think you would. All right, then we'll come up here. Now I got this brush straight in. And what I'm doing is when I push it, I'm just twisting it just a little to the right. And it puts just enough highlight on top. And, and, and you know, there may not be, in real life, there may not be that much highlight on these little, these little rocks with them laying along this path like that. But I just, I think they look good. And it don't it don't take many to to sell the effect of you know what they are. And if you want to just come in here and put a little random one out in the in the path, you know you can do that too. Just be careful and don't make one big tripping stone like I just did. And somebody bit on fell right there and got hurt. All right, I'm gonna quit while I'm ahead right there on that. Yeah. And we just got the occasional little. Little rock scattered out down through there. And then I'm going to come in here before I leave that side. Because I just ain't ready to leave this side yet. I'm going to pick up my, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to pick up my uh, script liner. And we'll come back into that brown. And I'm going to come up here and just here and there just bring out the little indication of you know maybe a couple little dead twigs and you know just the occasional little twig it ain't got to be many and then maybe over here on this side you know bring one out above the path then maybe back in here there's one There's one right there that sticks out. Just, just little random, 
little random sticks and twigs back in here. They'll just add to the overall landscape. We can bring one out back here. Just kind of give them a couple little little limbs and about like so. Maybe maybe a little small one back here. We'll bring it up above the water line back here. That way it'll it'll push that water line back just a little bit. <clears throat> right in here, I don't know if you noticed it or not, but right in here, I left this area dark. That way when the path goes back, you can't really tell what it's going back into. And that's a good thing. Because sometimes we just don't we just don't need to know. <laughs> um, we can make a our own little story right there as to you know what's going on back there. As far as we know, there may be a old trapper that lives back there that <coughs> he's got him a little cabin built somewhere back here that overlooks the lake and occasionally walks his path to a fishing spot. You never know. All right, now I'm gonna have to make some adjustments here because I got this set up to where you could watch me do that part. So this is going to get a little shaky, but I'm going to try to be as still with it as I can. All right. I'm going to try to get this tree in focus now, or in the picture. There it is. Because we've just got to work on that peninsula now. Alright, <clears throat> with that same one inch brush we was using, I'm going to pick it right back up, and I think the first color I'm going to use on it is a little bit of yellow ochre, and a little bit of cad yellow. I'm going to try to make these colors look like a golden, a golden kind of yellow. I don't want it to be more ochre. Then I do the uh, cad yellow. Alright. <clears throat> Let me see if I can get away with pulling this in closer to where you guys can see it. I think I think that's yeah, it don't look too bad. Alright. I got the corner of the brush loaded up again. And we'll come right up here. And all I'm gonna do is just touch and lift off. Just like that. Then right beside it, I'm going to touch and lift off. It's a very, very light touch. It's not a, it's not a, not trying to mush it in. And then I'm going to do it again, and then again. And then you can start with your, you know, just making your little tree shapes. And the only thing you want to remember here, while you're doing this, <laughs> oh, I know y'all get sick of hearing it, leave some dark in there. You've got to, you got to leave some dark in here to show them leaves on the back side of the tree. Because if they're not there, you, your tree's just going to look one-sided. It's not going to have no roundness to it. You want to be able to see those limbs on the back side. So that's why you want to leave that dark in it. And just keep in mind that, you know, you're basically not coming up here just just poking around and, and uh, hoping you get lucky. You know, keep your tree shape. Give yourself some Give yourself some shape here. About like that. 
Now, <clears throat> I want this to look like there's two trees. I want it to look like this tree was here, and then we're going to bring another tree under it. So in order to do that, we got to make a color change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to pick up a little of the green along with these same colors. And I'm going to come right here under it, and I'm going to start my color change right there. May even add just a little of the white to to uh, kind of brighten it up some. But just like that, I want to I want that color change in here to where it looks like two trees. All right, then I'm going to pick up a little more white. I'm going to tap that white in pretty good and push some of that other color on deeper in my, in my brush. Because I'm going to come up here now on these outside edges. And I want to I touch them just a little bit with this white. Kind of brighten them up some. Not much, just some. All right, then I'm going to pick my fan brush up that I had a while ago. I'm gonna put just a little bit of thinner on it. And all of the colors that's mixed together now, like green and yellow ochre and all those other colors, I'm going right into those colors. And I'm gonna come right down here at the bottom where my grass or where my little bushes meets the rocks. And I'm gonna come across here and I just want to touch and come right down on, onto the onto the bank. It's kind of like that grass is growing on down onto the bank. And if it's not dark enough, you can come in there and pick you up a little of the uh, brown and a little more of the green and a little more of the yellow and get you a darker green come back up here I don't like that I think I'm gonna do a white I think I want it to be a lighter colored grass than that something maybe about like this yeah there we go I like that color a whole lot better I want it to be seen and I want this I want this bank to look like it's got some grass growing on it back here but even at that I don't want to kill all my all my uh, my bank colors that we made I just want to I want it to look like grass is growing down on it but I still want to leave enough of this bank that we can we can see what we built when we built it, you know. About like that should be plenty fine. All right, then all we got to do is finish up right in there with a couple of bushes. And for that, I'm going to pick my one-inch brush up again. And we'll go just into a tad bit of the thinner again. And I think on this color... I think the first color I'm going to use is red. Now remember you had white on that brush, so be careful you don't you don't turn this a, a real pink color. Because I just I want a little firecracker out here. Just lighten up that bank a little like that. Now I'm going to knock a little of that red out. I'm going to come back over here into the yellow. Since we've got some red in it, it'll have a little orange glow to it. Not much of one, but some. I'm going to come up here and make that little bush. About like so. And see, I'm leaving just a little bit of dark at the bottom of them bushes. Just a little bit. 
And we'll come over here and pick us up some more green. I want to make sure we have green just about everywhere so we don't run off and leave it. Looks real good. That's a good color green too. Then we'll leave a little dark at the bottom of that one. Alright. And we're going to change up colors right in there. Because we're coming down with that that kind of greenish yellow, so but it needs to be something kind of dark because that's real real shadowy back there. Tell you what, we'll use the same color that we just made. How about that? That green color. But what we'll do is we'll come away from this one a little bit. And we'll drop down under this one. And we'll make just enough across here that we can still leave some dark and not kill all of it. About like that. All right, then, I wish I hadn't washed my fan brush now, or I hadn't I dumped it in there. All right, I'm going to pick up that little fan brush I had earlier, and we'll come back up in here to this grass color we made, and we'll come right to the top of it, and I'm going to press up, just real lightly. I just want to press up on it just to give it some, to make it look like some of it is sticking up to make it look kind of grassy and then we can come back up here and straighten it out we can bring some highlight in on some of it if we want to just to give it a little little flavor change right there don't take much just little little subtle changes sometimes can can do so much for you. It just gives you that little, that little indication of separation up there, and sometimes that's all you need. Oh, wow! I got a decision to make now. I don't know about. All right, I'm gonna bring just a little bit of this color in here. I don't want to do much. I'm just gonna bring a little up in here just to just to make it look because right here you can you can mess up quick right there and then I'll so I got a little red in there I need to just an indication of red I don't want much just just a tad bit and then I got that orange I got the had just an indication of it. Alright. I want to say. <laughs> I want to say that that big tree. Is a little too far back. To. Uh, to worry about highlighting. I'm going to come in there and add just a little color to that. To keep it from. Because it's starting to blend entirely too much. I'm going to say we got just, just enough uh, color change in there. I mean, not color change. I'm going to say we got far enough back that this tree is not going to reflect in the water. And we'll leave our water just like it is. Because if we try to bring all that color in here, we could mess up really easily. You may be better than I am. And if you are and you want to reflect your tree, then you should do that. I always heard if you're scared, say scared. Well, I'm going to say scared. Because right now I'm kind of, I'm kind of scared to do that. I don't want to mess this paint up. Alright. What I'm fixing to do now is I'm going to go ahead and pick up a 2 inch brush, clean and dry, and I'm going to come right up here 
on these colors we just put in and I'm just going to very, very lightly, very lightly pull them down. Very lightly. And I got to try to stay out of that little tree I done made. And we'll pull those colors across. Just like, just like the other colors we done. Just real light. Just to give them a little reflection. We didn't even put enough color off there to really get it on the brush. <coughs> now I'll pick up my knife and I'll come up here into that white that's got now I got I got some white here that's got a little little yellow and green in it. And I'll bring that up here as my my ripple this time. Because that way it'll look like the water, the water that is rippling is actually reflecting those colors. And then I'll even I'll even come back in here and fix my my water line now. Because right here's where it dropped down. And come out. Like that. And then out here it'll look like it's reflecting that color too. There we go. Just about like that. And maybe just a little out here. Just a little. And we'll just smear it in to make it make it go right with our reflections right there and then that just well we can come in here and kind of kind of straighten these out some it don't take much just just a little all right then we can come back here and scrape us in a couple little sticks and twigs we don't want many way back here because Everything's so far off, you know. But we can put a few right in here. We can do some right in here. And if they don't get seen, they don't get seen. I mean, it's that's just the way it is. Sometimes everything don't work out for us in life. All right, now we'll get just a little bit more paint on my script liner. And I'm going to come right into my bright red. And I'll come right over here on this little tree. And I'll put my mark. And I thought real, real seriously about closing this little section in right here, this little corner. And I think I'm going to do that. That way I ain't got to worry about that reflection right there. So to do that, I'm going to come right up here in my brown. And I want just a little bit of the alizarin crimson. Just a little bit. That way it will give me a brown kind of to the red side. And I can come up here and just make a, just make a little indication of a little, a little tree that was trying to grow up here. Then you know maybe it just maybe it comes over here like so. And we don't know we don't know where it goes back down in here. And there again that's one of them things that you know sometimes we just we just don't need to know. But all we know is it's a little tree back there. And now we'll go to the script liner. We'll go right into this color. And we'll put us a little indication of a trunk that come up from nowhere. Back in here. Just like so. And 
and I think, and this is just me thinking, but I think with all that green we got growing everywhere, I think that little, I think that little tree would uh, probably benefit from some of it. So we'll pick us up a little green, a little cad yellow. We'll tap that that one side in like we always do. And we'll come up here and we'll just start adding some highlights on this little fella. Just here and there. It's not want to cover that trunk. But we'll get it there. There we go. We'll just come in here like so. Not like that. Maybe, just maybe, we put a little bit, a little bit of ochre in it, not much, just to give it that, that leaf effect that, like it's got some, some other color mixing in with it, and still have a little greenness too. That'd look good if we can get some green right there in the in the center portion. All right. Without becoming a mud mixer here, I'm gonna try to do this. Y'all wish me luck. Right there. About like that. And that's just a whole different, whole different color little little tree out there that's. Just kind of growing somewhere we don't know where. And let's see. I'll push it back. Let's see. Can you see the whole painting? No. All right. I'm going to try to move us again without creating a major disturbance. I'll tell you what. Let me, let me see if I can zoom out here and not touch the wrong button because I have been guilty of doing that before wrong way alright there's the whole painting now you can see it ok and I think what I'm going to do right there is I'm going to call it it's already got a signature. I think it's ready for a canvas. I mean a frame. And I really hope y'all enjoyed this. It was uh, it was fun to me. I kind of enjoyed it. Doing it in steps like that. So y'all leave me a comment. Like I said, you know, if you, if you watched the video this far, tell me what state you're from and you know, if you want to say, hey, I really like the painting, that worked too. But if you, if nothing else, you, you go watch the video of my grandson. You, If you need a good laugh, you need to see that video. It is hilarious. Because he's three years old and he's out there with with five-year-olds. And he is, he's having, a, he's having the time of his life. I mean, he is, he is really having a ball. All right, ladies and gentlemen, friends, I love you guys. And remember, God loves you more. Y'all have a blessed night, and see you next time. Painting with Harold.